Hi, welcome back to Harmon Speaks. Today we have a great show. I'm looking forward to getting into this one. I've been looking forward to it for a long time. We have Miss Lori with us today, and Lori is with the Smoky Mountain Service Dogs Association. This is a nonprofit, is it not? Yes, we are a nonprofit, okay. local nonprofit. Where are you located? Our kennel is located in Lenore City, okay. off of 321. The service area that we help veterans is about a 350 mile radius of Knoxville. Okay. Now, due to a technicality, we weren't able to go there and, and film the kennel, but we brought uh, one of the best of the kennel here. This is our new friend, Hooligan. And uh, yes, I did say your name. <laughs> and Hooligan have already, and I've become friends already. And he's going to show us a few things that the service dogs can do. Just a few, but we'll see a few. Tell us a little bit about how uh, Smoky Mountain Service Dogs got started. Well, um, I've been involved with them for about seven years as a volunteer. We are an almost all volunteer organization. Wow. We have about 200 volunteers now. Uh -huh. We have five employees, and these are our professional dog trainers. Okay. So uh, because of that fact, we like to say our business model is all volunteer. Uh -huh. About 97 cents out of every dollar donated goes directly to taking care of our dogs. That's an amazing amount. 97? 97 cents. That, yes, we're, we're very proud of that fact, right. but we do it because we've got volunteers. Sure. I'm a volunteer. Okay. Ligon works for food. Um, <laughs> so do I, by the way. Yeah. If you buy don't my house, all. come bring me food. Right. So, right. so it's only our professional dog trainers that are employees and, okay. and actually get paid for doing this. So it was started about 11 years ago. A group of people wanted to um, help people with service dogs. They sort of formed around somebody's coffee table, and we've grown from an existing eight dog kennel to our new facility now houses 18 dogs. Okay. Um, we own about 10 acres of this property, so we've got a complete indoor training facility. You know, in East Tennessee, the weather is too hot, too cold, too rainy, too something mm -hmm. most right. days. So we have the 18 kennels, we have an indoor training facility. We have um, a grooming area, which includes a, hydro an, a hydraulic lift, uh, washing facilities for the dogs. There's a medical exam room. So we really have everything we need there to train. And this is where our veterans come to learn once they're paired with the dog. Okay. They will come and learn how to handle their dog. I don't know if we said this online yet, but uh, your dogs specifically are aimed to service veterans, is that correct? Yes, all of our dogs will go to our severely wounded veterans. So no matter how much hooligan could help my life, I don't qualify. <laughs> but I'm really delighted that you're helping veterans. And where did that idea come from, do you know? Well, at, at the time, I believe some of the people who were the founders uh -huh. were working with another service dog organization that was helping autistic children. Okay. So the first idea was to do both, to help autistic children and our veterans. Okay. Then they quickly learned that that was such a huge need, and they thought that the veterans um, needed more help. We were getting a lot of amputees back during that period in the war, and they thought that helping our veterans was the calling for them. Well, I think it should be a calling for all of us. I agree. Yeah, I really appreciate I that you do this. I think our veterans have been through enough, and we need to show them some love and help them. So Absolutely. I'm really, really impressed with this program, and I thank you for telling us about it. Let's, first of all, you brought a harness, I think, I don't know what it's called. This is a harness, this is a, harness. This this is a mobility harness. So Tell us about how that works. So this would go on the dog vessel. Hold again. This isn't sized for him, but we'll pretend. Okay. So it would go like this, right. and then it would provide some stability and balance as a person is walking. Of course, they cannot support the weight of, sure. a, of a person, right. but as you're walking, they can provide some stability. Let's go. And then we have another version that we uh, call a light mobility harness. It's pretty much the same, but this part, instead of being rigid metal, is a very uh, thick and stiff leather. Okay. So it can provide some stability, okay. um, but just not as much. This is what we would call a full mobility harness. Okay, okay. 
right. What, what else can he do for uh, the service person? Well, our dogs learn at least 40 different tasks, and we call them tasks, not tricks, because everything we teach them is to help somebody right. stay safe. Um, a big part of what they do is picking up dropped items. Keys. That's yes. Incredible. So keys are pretty easy. They're kind of big and bulky. He can also uh, pick up a credit card. Left. And I'll show you that he can actually, if we were at a checkout stand, he can put it up on the conveyor belt. Okay. Put it. That's incredible. Yes. <laughs> that is incredible. Can you clean houses? Because I'm about to hire him out right now. <laughs> well, what he can do, if you happen to have some things, laundry or toys strewn about the uh -huh. floor, he can gather them up with the command that we say, get it, he'll get it. Okay. And if you've got a little laundry basket or a toy chest, they can put those items in your container for you. Then if it's laundry, he can, because you have put a lanyard on that basket, uh -huh. he can pull that basket into the laundry room and then either hand you items or jump up if it's a top loader and put that item right. in for you. Right. So yes, in a way he can clean house. Wow. Cannot fold clothes though. I, I, if right. you could fold right. clothes, it'd be perfect. <laughs> Look at sit. Well, he just made my children obsolete. So. <laughs> <laughs> so because they are in public, our dogs know basic com uh, position commands. Uh -huh. Left. Sit down and stand. Yes. Um, so, because we need to do both. Right. Good job. Good job. So, he knows how to just if you're in the grocery store and they've got those big carts out, stocking shelves, uh, sometimes they may need to be on one side or the other. If you are in a very narrow place, sometimes they need to go behind you. Okay. Well, again, go behind. Go behind. Good job. Good job. Um, sometimes you may want them in front of you so they can go backwards. Maybe if you're getting on an airplane and your seat's way in the back. Right. Um, so you don't want him behind you where you can't see what's going on. So you say back. Good job. Wow. They can also do things like find a telephone. You've put a little lanyard on your phone, just like you do with your doors that you want them to open and close. Mm -hmm. uh, with the command phone, he will go and search the house for it. Mm -hmm. If the phone rings and it's across the room, he will just go and get it mm -hmm. and bring it to you, so, which is a great thing to do, but it also could be critical. Say you have fallen down. Right. You didn't happen to think to fall down with your phone in your pocket. <laughs> right. So you ask your dog to go find your phone. He can bring it to you, and now you can call somebody for help. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, how long does it take to train a dog like this? It takes at least two years. Okay. We acquire them from mostly from breeders when they're at eight weeks old. They go uh, at that point directly to live with a puppy raiser family, more okay. of our volunteers. All right. Come here, sit. Um, so when they're about a year old, then they go to live in the kennel and they start working every day with our professional trainers. Mm -hmm. During the time they're at the puppy raiser home, they come for lessons at least once a week. Okay. So now they're a year old, they're living in the kennel, five days a week they're working with the trainers. On the weekends they go out to more volunteers called weekend respites. They take the dogs into their home for the weekend and then the dogs, one, they just learn how to relax and two, they get exposed to different environments. We want our dogs to be out to ball games with the kids, church on Sunday, mm -hmm. go out to dinner, go mm -hmm. to Costco, grocery shopping, all the normal things that, that people do, okay. including sitting on the sofa for three hours to watch a football game. Okay. Uh, they're used to being always on a routine during the week, you know, train, right. rest, train, uh, exercise. But now it's just chilling out like a lot of us do for most of the time. All right. So when they're about a year and a half where they've passed a certain number of um, tests, they might go to live with an advanced foster home where they will continue to work on their skills, right. continue socializing, 
and also um, once the match is made, maybe fine tune some of the skills that they, they need in particular. Okay. So all of this process means the dog is at least two years old, more like two and a half, okay. until they are finally placed with the veteran. Okay. Do you use a specific type of breed of dogs? We use mainly Labrador Retrievers and Golden Retrievers. We have some Lab Golden Mixes that we like quite a bit. Um, and for our purposes, we found that that just does the best job. They're the right size, the right temperament, they're food motivated, and we train using those positive methods only. So um, they work out great for us. Well, Neil and I are food motivated too, so <laughs> we can relate. We'll that. fetch anything yeah. for bacon. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so Hula and I, I feel like I have a lot in common. Yeah. You know, if, if my wife would carry a bag of tricks or snacks for me, <laughs> I'd do whatever you she could do. You could do anything. That's right. I would do anything, yes. Lori, tell me, uh, how do you, if you're a service person and you want one of these dogs, how do you apply for them? It's very simple. Just go to our website, which is SmokyMountainServiceDogs.org, and there's a tab at the top that says Apply Here. Just click on that. There's a very short form to fill out. Then you will get a call from our veteran liaison, uh, talk a little bit about it, and then there's a lengthy application that comes later. But very simple to get the process started. Okay. The, uh, does VA help pay for these dogs? The VA does not pay for a service dog, um, and we are a nonprofit. We provide these dogs to the veterans at no cost. It's about a $25,000 dog that uh, we are happy to provide to our veterans. Uh, once the veteran has a dog, if it's acquired from an assistance dog international accredited organization, which we are, then the VA will help by providing veterinary insurance for their dog, they will also replace equipment such as that harness that I showed you is about a $600 harness. The VA treats it as a medical appliance if you needed a new wheelchair or a new prosthetic limb, uh, same category with the VA. So they do get a lot of help that way. Okay. But your organization helps you get this and it's no cost to the service person? No cost to the service person. We provide them the dog. We have a wonderful local uh, pet food store called Natural Pet Supply. There's one here in Knoxville and one in Johnson City. They provide free food for the life of that dog. Wow. We have mm. another pet company called Paw Tree. If the veteran lives outside of the area and they can't go and pick up their food, Paw Tree will send them food, ship it right to them. Uh, so the dog is supplied, their pet food is supplied, uh, the veterinary services are supplied, so really the veteran just has to um, have the dog and provide the care and love and support, which has never been a problem. Right. There's a real bond. Right, that sounds great. I think this is a wonderful program. Unfortunately, I'm broke. So if somebody wants to donate to you, how do they do that? Well, um, that's, that's how we get by, is right. from donations from the community organizations. We get some grants. But our website is SmokyMountainServiceDogs.org. There's no E in our Smoky. Okay. Um, so if you go there, there's a place to donate. There's uh, PayPal. There's an address if you'd like to send in a check. We also have various fundraising activities throughout the year. Lots of businesses have supported us by doing fundraisers. Uh, this year, unfortunately, because of COVID, we are not doing our annual Night for Patriots, but look for us next year. It's generally September, October time frame. It's a wonderful uh, banquet, and we have a silent auction. If you are a business that would like to donate, uh, maybe to support our golf tournament, which is happening this year, September 18th, uh, we have sponsorships available for that. I believe all of the golfing slots have been uh, reserved already, but sponsorships are always welcome. But we would love to have your support if you'd like to volunteer. We were always looking for great puppy raisers. It's a big job, a big commitment, but we could really use your help and our veterans would really appreciate it. Uh, weekend respite is the way I got involved. It's a very small commitment. You decide how many weekends a month that you would like to help and you tell us which weekends you're available just a month ahead of time. And then, um, as I said, you go to the kennel, pick up a dog, bring it home for the weekend, and then return it Monday morning.
Well, I really do appreciate you coming here today, Lori. Thank, Thank you. you. It's my pleasure. I, I think this is a, a service everybody needs to know about. And on behalf of the Harmon Speech staff, I want to thank all the service people who have served our country. Right. And we want you to know that if you have come back with some sort of injury or some sort of disability, that we want to talk with you as well. So please know we're reaching out to you with this show. We want you to know that there are services here for you that will help you if you need them. And we want to help make sure you know about them. So please reach back out to us and let us know if there's some way we can help you. Please know that we appreciate what you've done for our country. And I hope these service dogs can make your life a little easier. Thank you for joining us today. Please like and subscribe. We're still trying to spread the word about the show. Please help us do that. We need to convince YouTube to let my double chin stay on the computer. So please, please join us and help us do what we need to do. Thank you. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Not, not me, no. Anybody else, right? <laughs> <laughs>